Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Sunday night session with Brian and Janice. We are delighted to be with you on this wonderful evening, also this wonderful weekend. I hope everybody has had a wonderful weekend and you thoroughly enjoyed it. The weather was beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and I hope that everyone has found themselves safe from harm and enjoy this wonderful weather. Um, tonight we're going to do a deep dive. Uh, well, I won't say a deep dive, but I'm going to look at, we're going to skim over doing a comparison between Christ, Christianity as it relates to, as a comparison to African, a similarity between Christianity and African spiritual, spiritual systems. systems. So, uh, I hope that you all are watched tonight. If you have questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, this is going to be a great session. I wish you would share with as many people as you feel that would benefit from this awesome topic. Brian has done extensive research in uh, Christ Christianity as well as African spiritual studies. So without further ado, I'm going to let Brian open us up and I will be asking questions and you're more than welcome to ask questions as well. Well, good evening, Facebook family. Good evening, um, YouTube family. This is one of my uh, loves when it comes to uh, spirituality, when it comes to religion. Um, so I will just echo what Jenna says. Uh, I've been studying this for over 20 years now easily uh, when it comes to uh, the African spiritual system. Christianity uh, as well. Of course, uh, some of you all that know me personally know uh, my background as it relates to uh, the Christian faith, uh, the Christian religion. So this is going to be a very interesting study. Uh, I think it's a necessary study, it's a necessary topic tonight simply because when you are, and everybody listen at these stats, when the church is losing parishioners. The way that we're losing parishioners now, you have to start asking questions. Number one, what is it that they are gravitating towards? Number two, and we talked about this on a different show, why are they leaving Christianity? Why are they leaving the Christian faith that most African Americans that reside in America grew up learning, grew up going to church, grew up with grandma and granddad taking them to Sunday school, grew up singing in the church choir. Um, unfortunately, our young people have veered away from that. Definitely veered away from it. And, and not only that, they are gravitating towards something else. Here's one question that is very relevant that I've had a lot of young people uh, to ask me concerning Christianity. Their question is, where is Jesus in all of our suffering? Where is Jesus in the mistreatment of African Americans in this country? Where is Jesus as it relates to the police brutality with young black men? Where is Jesus with when it comes to the our babies suffering, not having enough to eat? So they have questions yes. as it relates to, and they have questions often times that the elders cannot answer why because they have not taken that extra time to really exegete and understand scripture beyond just surface things, beyond just the good hooping, beyond just the uh, curriculum of etiquette teachings, what I call etiquette teachings, how to act, how to conduct yourself uh, within the church realm, what the church expects, things of that nature, okay? 
Uh, some churches have a syllabus. Some churches have a curriculum. You have many different facets of what churches are now trying to do to engage people on a, a deeper thought level, which I applaud. I think it's great. Um, where a lot of this fails, though, is it doesn't reach the young child in the ghetto. It doesn't speak to the overall uh, experience of black America. Okay, so it's still, uh, in our eyes, it's, 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 a, it's still, you know, it's, it's still minuscule in a way. Yes. You know, it is, um, it's, it's, it's a rudimentary, uh, rudimentary level teaching that doesn't dive into the deeper things as it relates to certain questions we may have. So what we want to try to do is, <clears throat> I want to try to show you all uh, today, or this evening rather, show you some similarities as it relates to some African spiritual systems and show you that these spiritual systems were foundational to what we know as now uh, the formation of Christianity, what we know as Christianity. So we need to discuss that. We're, we're going to, uh, like I said, just kind of dive into some of those things. We'll break down some of those things. I'll try to make it as elementary as possible. Uh, not going to go real deep because I just want to give you a good foundation and, and help you to understand uh, that the African spiritual systems, the foundation of the African spiritual systems, uh, the similarities, like Janet said, as it relates to Christianity, and then show you how not only uh, the similarities, but African spiritual systems uh, is the origin of all spiritual systems in the yes. world. Yes. Uh, many people don't look at it, African spiritual systems as such, but if uh, human origin started on the continent of Africa, then quite naturally that would speak to the spirit system okay. also yeah. starting on the continent of Africa with the people that are the yeah. actual progenitors of all creation. Okay? So that's how that's how simple that is. You know, that that's that's real easy to, to say, you know, if people are actually well, Brian, how can you say that the African spiritual system is the origin of all other spiritual systems? Because it is the beginning of humanity. That's how simple that is. There's nothing difficult about that. You know, that's, that's not a difficult thing to learn. That's not a difficult thing to know. If humanity started in Africa with the people of Africa, yeah. then quite naturally any system in civilizations, whether we call it religions, spirituality, doesn't matter what we title it, had to start with those people, right? right. So that's how simple that is. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> all right, so... Um, any questions, Janice? No, I just want you to hit it hard and, and, and give us... It's, it's, give it quick and so we can understand it. Make it plain. Okay, so I'll, we're, we'll kind of do some... Um, you know, just some basics here. When we think about Christianity, what do we think about? What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about Christ? Christ. First, that is the absolute the first thing that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. When we think about Christianity, the first thing that comes to mind is Jesus Christ. Yes. And rightfully so. That is the first thing that should come to mind because the whole <coughs> word Christianity has Christ in it, right? Right. So it's a constant reminder of what our faith is based on. It is based on the Christ concept, right? Yes. Okay, so that's why you got the word Christianity. Christianity simply means, uh, and I've shared this on a previous show, means the followers of Christ. Okay, so that's when, when you put that suffix on, on the end of Christ, that's all it is, the followers of Christ. So you automatically, naturally think of Christ. What other African spiritual systems speak of Christ in the same context but have different uh, names for their deities. Do you know right offhand this well, one? Hebrew Israelites. The Hebrew Israelites. Is okay. 
All right, but the, yeah, the, but the Hebrew Israel, Israelites, okay, since you brought them up, I was going to deal with that at the end, but we'll deal with it as the, in the question format that you have. Hebrew Israelites believe in the Messiah. Yes. Okay. Uh, instead of them referring to Jesus as Jesus, a lot of them refer to Jesus as Yehoshua, okay? That is the Old Testament name, Joshua, mm -hmm. okay? In the Hebrew, the J is Y, okay? okay? Because there is no J in the Hebrew language, okay? So wherever you see the J, you substitute Y, y. there for the Hebrew language. It is pronounced Yehoshua. And some say Yeshua. Yes. Okay? So, same figure, just using the old name, okay, from a Hebrew aspect. Okay. They're using the Hebrew name, okay. okay, but still the same figure in the New Testament. There's no delineation between the Jesus of Christianity and the Yehoshua of the Hebrew Israelites okay. doctrine. Okay. Okay. Now, not to offend my Hebrew Israelite brothers, which I've done deep studies on that and lectured at many Hebrew Israelite churches and temples, and have lectured at many uh, rabbinic temples. Okay? Hebrew, the Hebrew Israelite doctrine is very identical to the practice of what we know as the rabbinical Judaism, okay, or the Jewish Judaism. So I tell my Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters, they have to be very careful because they're taking a African concept of spirituality and oftentimes they're mixing it with the religious system that was formed by European Jews that we refer to as Judaism, okay? And like I say, a lot of times they do not separate the two. Okay. They simply fall into the practice of Judaism, but yet title it Hebrew Israelite word, doctrines, principles. So things, such things as the feast day, Okay. They fall into the practice of some of those feast days, not understanding the origin of the feast days, and instead of them practicing what the true Hebrews did, those African descendants that were in the place called Jerusalem, that were in Palestine, or what we know in the Old Testament as Canaan, those people practice different their practices were different from what we know as Judaism. Okay. okay. So, give you one instant Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Sukkot, what they call the Feast of Booths, when they set up a tent uh, in their prospective place and they have uh, a dinner, but it is, it is uh, typically the celebration of the coming out of bondage, okay, uh, the deliverance out of oppression into a place to where they could freely worship God. And when the people came out of bondage into a place of freedom where they could worship God in the wilderness, mm -hmm. as the scripture says, they set up booths. Okay. Okay, so there's a, a, a practice in Judaism called the Booths or the Sukkot, the festival of Sukkot or the festival of Booths, okay, is part of the whole festival system. Okay. Okay. Right. So, and then I'll stop there, but like I said, there, there are similarities, and I think if the Hebrew Israelites, um, those that do do the deep study, they have. Uh, began to separate the African spiritual system of the Hebrews from those of Judy. the Judy, Jewish 
European Jews, which is Judaism. Okay. Okay. So does that help you understand that yes. a little bit? Yeah. Okay. All right. So their, like you said, their their center focus is still uh, the Messiah. Okay. Uh, the the Yehoshua or Yeshua. Mm -hmm. It focuses around the Messiah Christ. Okay. Another um, uh, spiritual system that centers on the Son, which is the Messiah, who we call the Messiah, Jesus Christ, that a lot of African people gravitate towards is the Kemetic system. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have a necklace with the symbol of the Ankh on the necklace. Yes. That is out of the Kemetic spiritual system. In the Kemetic system, the foundation of the Kemetic system is from the human spirit aspect is also the father, the son, and the mother. Okay? okay. What we would know as Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. And Jesus. Right. Same system is in Kemet. Okay? Kemet's system is much older than Christianity. Okay? So that African spiritual system could actually be stated that it is part of the origins of many other spiritual systems who also have a deity type pantheon with the mother, the father, the son. Okay? So who, were, who was the mother in Egypt? Okay, the Greeks call her Isis. We know that in the Kemetic tongue, it is Aset. Okay, and in also our uh, English, we speak of uh, her as Isis as well. Okay, so she is the mother of the son Horus. Okay. So let me go back to her comedic name, Aset. The word Aset actually means bringer of life in the comedic. Okay. She bears a son named Horus. In the Greek, in the comedic, it is Heru. We get our English word hero from it. And the word means son of light. <laughs> okay. So in the father's name in the Kemetic is Asar. In the Greek, it is Osiris. Okay. So you have that triune pantheon. You have the Joseph, Jesus, and Mary. Foundation. Okay. You you see in the uh pyramid text, you see a saw a set in Heru. You see the Osiris, Isis, and Horus. In the when you look at the pyramid text, what we call the pyramid text or the hieroglyphics as yes. we know it in the English, okay. When we look at that, we often will see the son depicted suckling on his mother's breast. Okay? Uh, so that system, like I said, can be stated because it is an older system than Christianity, can be stated that it is also the origin of what we see in the formation of Christianity with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the Mother, the Father, the Child, so on and so forth. It is the triune system. Okay. So why do you, why do you say, Brian, that the system of the comedic system is older or it predates Christianity? Because according to from everything that's been studied by archaeologists, okay, and this is not my finding, this is archaeologists' finding, 
paleontologists finding is that the civilization that we know as Egypt, uh, Dr. Browder, Tony Browder records this very well in his book, The Nile Valley Civilizations. It is recorded that that civilization formed in what we know as the area of Egypt around 8,500 to 10,000 years ago. So it is at least, if Christianity, if the actual uh, foundation and the origins of Christianity was set in place 6,000 years ago, okay, up under the Adamaic concept with Eve yes. and bearing sons, yes. okay, if it was set in place quote unquote 6,000 years ago, then, it, then the uh, Kemetic is at least 4,000 years older. Older than that. Than that. Okay. Okay. So that's why we say that the Kemetic foundation of what we see as a spiritual uh, system concerning the father, the mother, and the son predates that of the Christian concept of the father, the mother, the son. Okay. And of the Holy Spirit, uh, the Father and the Son. Okay. So, in the Kemetic uh, mythology, we know that Osiris is killed. Yes. Okay. Horus, his son, helps to gather the pieces as he was cut up. And by his brother Seth, he has a confrontation. He's cut up, he's scattered all over. Uh, the continent, they regather him, and Isis immaculately conceives a child. Okay, <laughs> so we 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 have that that mythology. Okay, and there are many questions with that mythology, uh, but that's the stated, predated system that Christianity kind of follows. Okay, any questions on that before I move to the next? No. <laughs> she, she doesn't have any questions on that. But brothers and sisters, let, let me just say this. Um, it, it's a good study. It's a good study. If you want to do this is a good uh, good book by brother Anthony Brower Tony Browder, I've had the pleasure of lecturing with, I call him Dr. Browder, with Dr. Browder on several occasions. And what is the name of that book, Brian? The name of this book is Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization. Nile Valley Contributions, Contributions to Civilization. Okay? Uh, get this book. It's, it's very, very good. Um, it gives you some basics as it relates to the formation, the migration, uh, the spiritual system that comes into to formation. Uh, Dr. Browder in the chapter called the uh, peopling of the Nile Valley. Yes. He gives an awesome timeline on pre-dynastic and dynastic periods. Okay. Uh, and even going into what we would call the uh, Greco-Alexandrian period of the Ptolemaic pharaohs, okay, that's that's when your Europeans enter into uh, Egypt around 333 BCE, okay. So get that book, brothers and sisters. Uh, it'll help you if you want to take a you know a, a closer look and, and do a, a a deeper study. So I, I won't go into all of the um, the different concepts as it relates to command. I will say this, the word that we know in the Christian language as amen, 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 meaning it is so, comes out of the word amun, okay, which amun is the oldest god in the Egyptian deity pantheon, okay, he is referred to as the creator, the one that bursts, the one that opens up, 
Okay. Yes. Knowledge, yes. wisdom, all things he created. He says, I exist within myself because I exist. So all of these different things, he says when he, kicker, the word kicker means to bring forth flashes of light. Okay, so when you look at that, but we get our word, it is so, amen, it is so, meaning it is so. From a moon. From a moon. A moon. Okay, out, out, out of the comedic language. Okay. okay, and that's basically what a moon says of himself. I am so, I exist because I existed before, and I existed in all things, and when I kick it, I birth up my own existence. So everything comes out of me. So that is the English translation. Like I said, the word amen, when you say amen, that is basically what you're referring to. You're saying I exist because it is so. Because I existed in the beginning with a creator God. It is so. I am who I am because of who God is. So, many people just say amen and don't know what they're saying. <laughs> it's an acknowledgement of your existence based on a spiritual concept out of Africa. Okay. Very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. All right? <laughs> so, there are a lot of words in the English language that uh, if we go back to this origin, you'll came see came out of the African spirit system. Okay, so okay, so any questions? Any other questions? That was good. Okay, yes. on that. Right. So let's talk about some controversial <laughs> spirit systems. Bring it on, Brian. That that I love. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's talk about voodoo. That many people call voodoo. Okay. There is a difference. Let me say this before I even, because I'm not going to go deep into this. I'm going to just give you some surface things to think about. But before we, before I even say anything about that, the voodoo practice that many people have come to know by way of the French Creole system out of New Orleans is slightly different from the voodoo practice that you see in Haiti, okay? What we have to understand is that prior to Columbus making his way to those that Caribbean, Caribbean islands, to the Caribbean, Caribbean islands, the there were two groups of indigenous people there. The Arawak native people and the Tano native people. Both of those native indigenous people to that island okay, claim progenitors or ancestors, claim to be descendants of ancestors out of Africa that had traveled there hundreds of years prior to the expedition of Columbus. of Columbus and the Spaniards and those that came to that island. Okay, so there was a spiritual practice that was in place in those islands prior to the Africans that came Okay, and that were uh, used as slave labor in those islands. Okay, now when we look at those two uh, people group in Haiti, the Tano and the Arawak, we see that their practice were very similar to the African slaves, though, or the Africans that had been enslaved that were dropped off on that island. So that's where we get the whole concept, the bringing together of those indigenous people, all who were descendants of ancient Africans 
and Africans that had traveled there prior to any Spaniard or European invasion, okay? Their spiritual systems were very, very similar. Nowhere you'll go in Africa will you see spiritual systems that are drastically different, okay? okay? And let me give you an example. We have Christianity, but you have different groups of uh, Christians, okay? Like Pentecostals. Yes, that's right. Pentecostals, Baptists, Methodists, Lutherans. Uh, Lutherans. Yes. yes, you can go on full gospel. Mm -hmm. What separates them? When you look at the basic foundation of their spiritual system of Christianity, it is the same. It is centered around one Messiah, and it is centered around the concept of the resurrection, the death the burial and the resurrection. Yes. Okay, so you have the apostles saying without their without a resurrection, there is no faith. Everything is centered around the resurrection. Yes. Okay? So if you don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then you don't believe in Jesus, right? Right. Okay? So don't look so confused, baby. <laughs> I'm trying to get it. Uh, it's it's not, it is, it's, it, but see, for Christians, because we don't do deep study. This, this, and, and I say this, and I don't want, like I say, I, I've always said this, I don't like to paint people with a broad brush, but for most Christians, when you ask them simple questions that they call deep, it's because they only read their Bible in Sunday when the pastors say, when you stand for the reading of the scripture. Or they only read their Bible on Wednesday. Or it, and they don't get a strong concordance. They don't go by a Bible dictionary. They don't get commentaries that have been written. They don't read anything else. It goes back to the whole slave mentality. Where the slave master said, if we allow them to read, then they can only read the Bible and their interpretation of the Bible is what we say, not what they understand. Okay? So, so you have brothers like Nat Turner that takes a deeper look and dive into the scripture. They have to wipe him out because he calls them on some of their misinformation related to the oppressed people, his people. Okay? Always having to submit to the master and the master is uh, obliged for the mistreatment. The master is rewarded. Brother Nat says something is wrong. There's no way you can beat us on a daily basis, make us do all this hard labor. We're not rewarded and God approves of that. That's, that's not correct. So Brother Nat takes a deeper dive. So when you have people that that began to take deep dives and to really understand that the system is flawed. Mm -hmm. Those people are moved out of the way. They're quickly, they, they, you got to get them out of the way because you don't want to offend the status quo. So you don't want to offend the preacher that's pimping the people and taking up tithes and offering, living like a king when his church is in a poor ghetto. You understand what I'm saying? And everybody there strung out on drugs. And just walking around like mindlessly. Yeah. You understand? So then you got your uppity Christians that are in the church. And as long as I'm okay, I'll come and I'll support and I'll pay my little tithes and offering. But don't offend my, you know, what I've built for my life. You see, we have a backwards concept. So I tell people, until you really learn what the gospel truly is, and until you start really studying and stop accepting what you think you know. Because oftentimes what you think you know is just that. It's what you think is not what the truth says. <laughs> so, I, and, 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 and we have to start challenging some of these, like I said, just like our young people, we have to start challenging some of these concepts and challenging some of these things that we have called truths for so long, but may in fact be lies that we've been told 
by those that have enslaved us and kept us from reading and learning all of these centuries. Even to the point now where they want to ban reading again. They want to stop you from being able to get certain books that has certain profound truths like Nile Valley contributions to civilization. You understand what I'm saying? Like the Bible. Next, that's what's going to be, because truly the Bible, when it boils down to it, is the greatest African history book, in my opinion, ever, ever put out. But it takes a African mind, not a European mind, to look beyond what you've been taught as relates to European religious concepts. Because, like I said, all religions started in Africa. There's no religion that exists today that doesn't have its foundation on the mother continent. All religions. Even Buddhism. Yes. Okay? So, uh, so even Taoism. I can show you the same principle concepts of a mother, father, of the triune type of pantheon in Buddhism, in Taoism, in Confucianism, in all, of, all of those things. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So, it's good for us to, to look at these things beyond what we think we know. And like right. I said, yes. if we, we, we really have to do that. If you want to become a more spiritual person, you have to look beyond just Sunday morning and Wednesday night Bible studies. And that cannot be the only two nights that you crack open a Bible or that you read a book. You know So that is, in, in, in my, I always say, okay, that the, the foundation to the problems of all black people is based in our spirituality. That is the essential core of our existence and non-existence. The way we treat each other, how we view each other, what we do to each other, all of those things, what we believe and what we don't believe, it all sits at the core of what is the basis of our belief. What is the foundation that makes us who make that makes us who we are? You know, what spiritual system is it that connects us? And that's where we have to find camaraderie. See, that's what Brother Marcus Messiah Garvey did. He said, "Look, our religion should not separate us. I don't care if you're Muslim. I don't care if you're Jewish. I don't care if you." Hebrew Israelite, I don't care what you are. The foundation is we all serve a black God. And we're all black people. But you okay. have some of those that are told that are uh, it is enforced that they do not fellowship or they do not associate with people of other faith. That is a backwards premise and process to keep black people divided. Whenever you have a faith saying, I will not fellowship with my brother because they are not, they don't believe the same thing I believe, that is rooted in European concepts of individualism in religion. Okay? It is not rooted in the true foundation of African spiritual system that connects us. See, nowhere, and, and this is the thing, Jesus, this is what the scripture says. I'll say this. The scripture says, how can you say that you love God and hate your brother that you see every day? So that's not my words. That's the same Bible that these people say that if you're not of belief, if you don't believe what I believe, then I can't fellowship with you. <laughs> now, now see how simple that is yes. and see how ignorant we are when it comes to believing something but yet we don't read the Bible 
There's no way you could tell me that you are a believer when you read that scripture and the scripture said, how can you say you love me when you hate your brother you right. see every day and then say that you are a spiritual person and you separate yourself from your brothers. Right. There's no way. It's, it's a, a level of ignorance that has evolved in our community when it comes to religion that continues to divide right. us. Yes. Okay. And a house divided against itself still can't stand. Can't stand. Okay? So, I don't, that's why I tell people, it doesn't matter to me what you believe. Because guess what? In the end, the road is going to wind up at the same place. Exactly. Now, you don't have to believe me, but when you leave this planet, you're going to find out that the basic concept how you came and how you leave is going to be the same. And what you find out in the end, it doesn't matter what you believe, yeah. it's going to be the same. Okay? So, now, in order to truly expound what we believe if we say we are Christians, or what we believe if we say that we are practitioners of the comedic, those two that I've, I've actually talked about so far, is being able to unite ourselves for the greater good of the community. Exactly. You understand what I'm yes. saying? Let's put aside our petty differences, differences as it relates to Beliefs. What you doctrinally mm -hmm. believe and, and what, you know, I doctrinally, doctrinally mm -hmm. believe, mm -hmm. okay? Because we know that most doctrines are formations of man based on what they perceive yes. relating to how we should conduct ourselves, how we should live, and they are in, inter intertwined into spiritual laws. Okay? So I'll give you an example. Thou shalt not kill. Okay? That is a spiritual concept. The natural laws of man says you shall not murder. Okay? You shall not kill. It's intertwined. So the natural and the divine intertwine itself with one another. Okay? Yes. It, so if we as Believers, whether it's in Christianity, whether it's in Kemetic, whether it's in an African uh, spiritual system, whether it's a Hebrew, Israelite, if you cannot accept the fact that your spiritual system is there for the good of first your brother and your sister, and then overall for the good of humanity, then there's something wrong with you. Diametrically with, wrong. With what you believe in. And yes, the spiritual system that yes. you call yourself practicing. Yes. Okay. Because I tell anybody, when you look at Islam, the core of Islam is the unification of all of humanity and to the love of Allah. Okay. So, when you start to separate and divide yourself, that rules you out. That is not a practice of what the core foundation of the spiritual system is based on. You have the different doctrines of Islam that, like I said, man have, from their perception, have interpreted it to be a certain way and then try to impose that on the people. Yes. Okay? Yes. So that's where you get the different sects of Islam, just like you have the different sects of Christianity. Yes. Okay? And you have the different sects of any other religion. Judaism has its different sects. Okay? So the, the big three, okay, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, all have different sects that are bad and that espouses bad things as it relates to people. What 
we have to do is find the commonality between those three and bridge them together for the love of each other and the love of humanity. So if we can't do that, then the worship that takes place as it relates to those spiritual systems are all in vain. Yes, exactly. So I tell people, you know, we should be growing in these practices, not falling in these practices. Mm -hmm. The reason that young people have a problem with Christianity today, the reason that they have a problem with other spiritual systems is because those that are in leadership and those that say that they are, take on these titles and say that they are Christian or, or Muslim or uh, Hebrew Israelite or uh, Jewish in practice, even if they're ethnically not European because you have uh, black African people that practice Judaism as exactly. well. Exactly. Okay. Yes, that are not, that will not affiliate themselves with the Hebrew Israelite sect of Judaism because that's what it is in practice. Okay. Those people are hypocritical when it comes to the bottom line foundation of their spiritual system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, there, there we have that. Okay, any other questions before I, I finish with voodoo, uh, voodoo? Voodoo, okay. okay. So we, we, like I said, it's, voodoo is different from voodoo. the French Creole practice that we know in New Orleans as voodoo, okay? There's some bad parts of voodoo, just like there is in any other spiritual system, just like we're talking now. Like I said, it's in Can Christianity Brian, and all you do that. a quick comparison between the two fours? A, a voodoo, yes. yes. So what the word vote the the actual voodoo is a system that practices uh, the sacred and the secular being tied together. Okay. So there's always an interaction in voodoo between the divine, between the natural, seeking guidance, wisdom and protection from what uh, is called the Lua. Now, Lua in the Vodou system is considered to be angels, spirits, or saints. Okay. Could it be ancestors? No. That's, that's a different, I'll talk about okay. that, okay? Right. But no, the ancestor realm is different yeah. from what you see the Lua. Okay. Okay. All right. So in the Christian system, what is similar to the Lua is angels. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the Catholic system, what is similar to the Lua is the saints because the saints have been venerated. Okay. Right. So you cannot be a saint in the system of Catholicism without being venerated. So you have to be venerated in order to be a saint. All right, so what the system of Vodou does, because when those Spaniards, okay, the French, uh, when they colonized those isles, in order for the people to continue their spiritual practice, they had to disguise. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. What they called their angels or their spirits. They disguised them within the religion that was brought to the eyes. Okay. And taught by those French and Spaniard colonizers. They disguised what they knew as their deities. Their angels, okay? Yes. In sainthood. Okay? So Saint Peter in the Vodou system would be Legba. Okay? That's right, yes. So in, in just giving you illustrations of you know how you would what you would see as it relates to uh, some of the saints and, and some of those systems. Uh, Saint James would be O O P 
Kun, or the God of Iron. Okay. Legba is the sun. He is the intermediary between God and man. Okay, so there you have the Messiah, similar to Christianity, in Vodou. Okay. Okay. Bandiye would be the father. Okay, because he is the creator of all things. Yes. The son would be led by, which is the intermediary between God, Bandiye, and man. And man. <laughs> okay. But they they hide Legba in St. Peter. He is a representative of so you when you see St. Peter, if you ever see somebody that practiced voting and they have a figurine of St. Peter, then you know that Legba could be their principal deity. Okay. Now it will take time for me to go into talking about what is a principal deity, understanding principal deities, things of that nature. Okay. But like I said, just for illustration purposes, I'm giving you those two, okay, to understand those two. So what is voodoo? So voodoo is, like I said, very similar practice to voodoo. Uh, some things have been changed when it comes to some of the rituals within the voodoo system. Okay. Voodoo is normally... Uh, equated to dolls and sticking pins. Okay, it's the dark side yes. of what I call the practice of, it's a variation of the dark side of the practice of voting. Okay. I think what everybody needs to understand and what many people don't understand in every spiritual system there is a dark side. Okay? Uh, give you for instance in the African spiritual system we did more listening than we did talking. Okay? Meditating. Okay? A Form of meditation. Mm -hmm. Okay? What, what, what the Asian practice will call it meditation. Okay. Okay. Um, in the Christian system, there's more talking than there is listening. Okay. So what Christianity refers to prayers, you do not see that in the African spiritual system. Because the African spiritual system being not a two-day-a-week system, but an everyday lifestyle, always communed with the ancestors and with the deities. Okay? Or what they, in the Bodu, it will be called the Lua. In the Santeria, it, they will be called Orishas. Yes. Okay? So then you have the Kantongle or the, the Lucame. Uh, that is the, out of the Brazilian African system, the um, Santeria is the African Cuban system. All right, and then you have the Ifa, which is the Yorubian system out of southwestern Nigeria. The uh, Vodou system practice, all of those systems that I just named come from one main system, and that is the Ifa system, what we know as the Ifa system out of southwestern Nigeria and it is related to the Yorubian people. Okay. Okay. Which the Yorubian people, it is stated that they came out of the eastern part of Africa and migrated down uh, into southwest Nigeria. So we can talk about that, but there's a whole different, um, you know, it's a, it's a similar system, but some different ritual practices. Okay. And like I said, maybe I'll go into that when we have more time. But when you see the system of Santeria, the system of Bodu, uh, the system of Lukeme, all of those are systems that are very, very similar and founded within the Ifa system of the Yorubian people out of Nigeria, okay, out of southwestern Nigeria. Okay. Okay. Any, any, you have any questions on that? Okay, so 
like I said, when you look at the principal system of Africa, it is pretty much generally going to be the same. It's about principles of living. It's about understanding the forces of nature, what we call the forces of nature. Okay? In Christianity, what would be symbolic of a force of nature? The Holy Spirit. What Christians call the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Could also be symbolic of a force of nature. Okay. What does a force of nature do? It guides. It protects. What does Christianity say the Holy Spirit do? It guides. It protects. It comforts. It's forces of nature. Now we have different concepts in the African spiritual system on how the forces of nature work together in order to accomplish a certain mission in your life. Right. Yes. As a human being. Yes. The Holy Spirit does the same. Very similar. Yes. No, no different. You understand what I'm saying? So, like I said, we put a lot of titles and, and, and names on and we don't understand that it is, it is generally the same. Yeah. Uh, so, I better end up here because we are, we are at 8.47. Okay, <laughs> okay so. so yeah, I'll like yes, like three minutes. And you have asked one question, but hopefully I'll explain <laughs> Hopefully I'm explaining it to where you all can really understand it. Uh, I want to show you another book. This is a small pamphlet. It is called uh, Ifa in the Spirit of the River. Awo Falokum Fatumbi. And that is the author. That is a good beginner book for you uh, if you want to learn one of those African spiritual system. This is a very good beginner book. I love that one. Okay. The Haitian Voodoo Handbook. Okay. The Voodoo Handbook. If you want to learn, and that is by Brother Kinaz Kalan. And then we have here, so I'm just showing you these. With my Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters, the deceiving of the black race, okay, that is by Moses Farah, and the Hebrew heritage of black Africa, also by Moses Farah. He quotes a lot of Stephen Jacobs in that, and then this, if you want to understand some of the comedic. Uh, spiritual systems and astrological spiritual systems. I didn't talk about the astrological spiritual systems. Okay? How the sun that we know in the sky also represents the son of God. I didn't go into the cosmology and the astrological. Because you have a lot of people that study that. Yes, yes. A valid study. Uh, but if you want to know, like I said, the comedic system some of your astrological systems. This is a good book. Who is this King of Glory by Alvin Boy Kuhn. And then there's one more book that I will reference to you that is in the library that every that is a good beginner book also is a book by Brother Jackson and it is called uh, Christianity Before Christ. Christ. Okay? Christianity before Christ by one of our brilliant ancestors. I cannot think of Brother Jackson's first name. But, uh, hold on, I tell you what, I, I do remember this. I think I, Brother, uh, my good brother, Riley's got it in his book. Brother John Jackson. Brother John Jackson. John G. Jackson, Christianity before Christ talks about the messiahs and the different spiritual systems that had the mother, father, son, the immaculate birth, virgin births, deaths, resurrections, all of these different typologies, systems that were, that predates Christianity by thousands
thousands of years, brothers and sisters, not hundreds of years, thousands of years. So I like to tell people, Christianity is one of the youngest still, yeah. youngest spiritual systems right now on the planet. It is nowhere near the oldest. It is one of the youngest spiritual systems. Uh, Islam, one of the youngest spiritual systems. Judaism, one of the youngest spiritual systems. So we get all hung up on those three being, you know, one of the other being right or wrong or being the principle of all others, and it's not. It is, it is the youth of spiritual systems. You've got to go back and look at ancient spiritual systems in order to understand those three babies. Because they're, they're still, they're just starting to walk. Okay? And that's why a lot of Christians are babies. Because they don't study beyond that. Even some of my brothers that have gone to theology school and have gone through their hermeneutical classes that, you know, having to learn the homiletics and all of that, but they don't take time to look into the deepness and to the depth of uh, how did I get this book called the Bible? They may study world religion. They may have to study, you know, you may have to go through the, uh, the, the very minor courses of Greek, Hebrew, and some Latin. Okay. But the bulk of it, you got to deep you, 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 you got to, yes, you got to really do some deep study yes. and understand. Once you do that, it opens up a new world to you, brothers and sisters. This is to encourage you. This is not to discourage you. So like I said, I don't talk down about people's beliefs because I understand now, uh, you know, through my study and through my practicing where all of this leads. I understand that very well. I don't have a concept problem when it comes to God like many Christians do. Okay? Okay. I don't, I don't have those issues anymore of explaining who God is and who he is not and if God had a wife, if he didn't. I don't have those issues anymore. Christians are still battling with that. You understand what I'm saying? So people will say, well, do you not call yourself or refer to yourself as a Christian? I'm an old ancient one. So I, I, when, I, when I tell people, you know, my practice as it relates to Christianity goes back beyond what the Bible says. It is the true, authentic Christian concept. And that is to be defined differently from what you have as your new age Christianity. What we see being practiced today in churches is new age Christianity. Like I said, they're babies. Because they're still learning how to walk. You understand what I'm saying? And some of them still in the crib. They, because they don't practice what they preach. That's right. You, you understand right. what I'm yes. saying? Yes. So from the pulpit down to the congregation. So I tell people, if you see a congregation that's very inept when it comes to understanding spiritual things, and only thing they can do is quote scripture, but cannot actually uh, give you any depth of that scripture, cannot give you any substance of that scripture, then they are a reflection of their pastor. Okay? That pastor is shallow. You understand what I'm saying? Their pastor's on milk, so quite naturally, guess what? The baby's going to be on milk. The children are going to be on milk. So we have to graduate from the crib for those that are still in the crib. And we got to start practicing to walk. And then some of them got to, after you walk, you got to be potty trained. <laughs> after you body train, you got to graduate to those good solid foods. You understand what I'm saying? So we go through the whole progression stages of what the Bible actually calls one that is a suckling. And those are Christians that are still dabbling in the minutia. They're dabbling in things that have no substance and their perception is all what they perceive. It's, it's not factual because they refuse to accept that some of what they perceive 
and have received is wrong. And when they're challenged on that, they cannot stand. So they get offended and they run away. Yes. And then if they're running away, they'll say, okay, well, he just this and that, or she just this and that. Then they, they want to throw accusations because they cannot stand on what they claim they know and defend what they claim they know. So I tell anybody, me as a Christian, if you come to me and you ask me something, I'm not going to shy away from it. If it is correct and I know what I know, I'm going to give you factual information. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going, I don't have to debate you. And I always have, I've been taught this by my elders, do not debate someone that is of a lesser knowledge than you. Healthy debates happen with somebody that is on the same level as you when it comes to your knowledge in a particular subject matter. Okay, so I don't debate people about religion unless you've got 20 to 30 years of studying and you've got two degrees in this like I've got and have lectured all over these United States about African spirituality, African, ancient African history. So when you get to that place, then we can talk. Okay, <laughs> but this is not a debate, and that's not being braggadocious, that's just being factual, factual and yeah. telling the truth that we have to graduate ourselves. Oftentimes, one thing I, I never did with my elders, I didn't argue something I didn't know about, and I would not fabricate something I did not know about. So I took it upon myself when they challenged me to learn. Yes about yes, what they were challenging me on. So we, I encourage you all to do the same thing. Some of what I've said tonight is going to challenge some of you all as it relates to what you believe, looking at other spiritual systems, uh, just even yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Start taking a deeper look at what you say you are as opposed to what that word says you should be. You understand what I'm saying? And if you really start to dissect some of that, you're going to find out you may be far from what the word describes as a believer and someone that follows Christ. You may be far off basis. If you find yourself there, challenge yourself to get better. That's, that's all I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying? If you need help, I believe in the African proverb. When a student is ready, the yes. teacher will come. Okay? Some of us, the teacher come and sit right by us, sit in our living room, talk to us, and we never accept it. Why? Because we close our minds because we don't want to become better. We began to blame everyone but ourselves. And instead of us looking in the mirror, we'll look at everyone else in our life and blame them. Okay. That is called the devil within. Okay. Wow. The devil within is the one that blames everybody but themselves. That's right. Okay. There's, there, there's not no devil outside of you doing anything. That is you doing it. Okay, that's the devil within you do it. Okay, and everybody, like I said, in, the, in every spiritual system, you got that duality. Now, I didn't talk about that. We got to Good and evil. Yes, and in people, you got a duality there. Okay, so we, we have to, that's what we have to deal with. Now, when you get to that place, then you can love. You understand what Truly I'm saying? Truly love. That's right. And if you can't love, you understand that I can distance myself till I grow to the point to where yes. I deal with whatever it is in me that's keeping me from being able to love that person. Yes, exactly right. So if I have to confront that person on some, some basic truths, if I have to get something off my chest, then I can do it in a manner that it is uh, not offensive. I can do it in a manner to where it is in 
a spirit of love. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. And then move on. Get that, that weight off of your shoulders. You understand what I'm saying? So all of these things that I'm, I'm saying to you, they exist in our spirituality. That's okay. beautiful. We have a beautiful spiritual system. It is still the most, in my opinion, the most beautiful spiritual system in the world because it offers a protection that exceeds and supersedes any other protection on the planet. And not only that, my brothers and sisters, there's no confusion when it comes to the system of practicing um, spirituality based off of what our ancestors had. Now, people will say, well, Brian, do you need a teacher? Do you, you know, I'm of the you know, belief that the scripture says that when the Holy Spirit is coming, it will teach you all things or bring all things to your remembrance. Remember I told you the Holy Spirit would be the same uh, as a force of nature or Lua or Orisha yes. in our spiritual system. And guess what, brothers and sisters? That is a concept taken right from our spiritual system. See, the, the ancestors will give you all things that you need to know. The creator, the divine one, will teach you all things that you need to know. Some people get caught up into the initiations if that's good, if you've got it, okay? But does that limit you? No. No, it doesn't limit you. There are some things that you'll learn through experience. Now, we got different, there are different rituals in the African spiritual system that you may need a teacher for, okay? Uh, and you, you may, you're going to need that mentor, okay? But just to come to know it and to study it and to practice it, you, you can do that. Yes, you can. Okay, it's no different from coming to know and love Christianity and practicing that and being a follower of Christ. Okay, so what I tell people, if you're practicing Christianity, you need to fall in love with it. Okay, it, 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 if you're not in love with it, you're not going to be able to practice it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to end right there. <laughs> okay. But I gave you all the books, so uh, make sure, brothers and sisters, that y'all get those books for those that want a deeper understanding. And uh, I just scratched the surface; really didn't go deep, um, you know. But maybe if you know time permits, maybe on a show I can really just take a deep dive into one specific practice that you want to know about. Uh, and we can talk in detail about those things. But this is no um, deflection on anyone's belief. No. It's mm -hmm. just the study. Um, yeah. It is where all things arrive from. Right, right. This so, is like I said, we don't, I don't get caught up into badgering or, or putting down people's belief. People have the right to believe what they want to believe. That's my understanding of what it is to be someone spiritual. <laughs> it's not up to me to say what is right and wrong. That's right. I can only tell you by the practice of who you are whether or not you are a reflection of the system that you say you believe. Just like the example we gave, with if you say that you love God but you hate your brother that you see every day then you're not practicing true Christianity. I can say that from a standpoint of the word that you say you practice. This is not me judging you. This is the word that you live by judging you. Does everybody yes, understand, you understand yes. that? Okay. Yes. So no brother that tells me that it's okay to separate himself from other brothers and sisters because they don't believe a certain way is being true to what they say they believe. If they are practicing a form of Christianity, and part of that form could be Judaism, Judeo-Christianity, it could be Hebrewism, Hebrew uh, Judeo-Christianity. <laughs> okay, so it, it is just it's just not factual. Okay, um, that is how we correct people. 
I correct you by your own words that you say you believe. You say you believe the Bible. That's in your Bible. That's not something Brian said. That I don't have to. So we. this is not a thing where we're judging or dislike or, or like. No, I don't get into that. That that to me is petty and very trivial. Okay? I love black people. I don't care what religion they in. <laughs> okay, that's, that's me now. That's Brian. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and I know this. Well, Brian, you know somebody practice devil worship? Hey, I don't have a problem with the brother as long as he ain't practicing it on me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but see, we have to get to a place. So if you love that brother enough, you make it turn him around from devil worship. So see, that's how I think. Everybody has a place in this thing as it relates to building our nation. And that's what we got to do. So we got to restore the African people. And in this country, we are lost. One of the things that separated us more than any other thing was religion. It still separates us more than any other thing. That's why I'm saying we have to get past that division. And it's going to take elders that know about things like this. Yes. What, we're, what I'm sharing with you all. It's going to take men and women that know these different spiritual systems that will sit down and say, look, brothers and sisters, this is the beauty of what we have. And what you're practicing is a form of what we have. But it did not divide us. So what is the problem with what you're practicing? You're practicing it from a European mindset. Let me restore your African mind. Okay? To where you can love your people, regardless of what you say you are. Because oftentimes you identify with what the Europeans said you are. See, Christianity is what the Europeans said you are. That's not what the Africans said you are. The European mind said you are a Christian, not the African mind. What does the African mind say I am? That, so we have to get beyond those, like I say, those idioms. Yes. You gotta get beyond those titles. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't care if you say you're a Hebrew Israelite, you're not a Hebrew Israelite. I can show you right in your own Bible. Hebrew is a language. It is not an ethnicity. You understand what I'm saying? And you, if you understand what the word Hebrew means, you would not, you identify yourself as a man or woman from across the river, meaning that you're just from the another side of the continent. That's all it's saying. It is not an ethnic identity. So when Hebrew Israelites come to me and tell me, okay, Brother Brian, this is who you are. You're really a Hebrew. You're a Hebrew Israelite. Well, there was no such thing as Israel in the Bible. Israel is the name of Jacob That's being right. changed, Change. yeah. okay, yes. to mean father of nations. Now, there was no such thing in the Bible when you go back to it, word called Hebrew. That is a Greek word for an African word. That is pronounced Ha'agbaru, which means one that journeys or wanderer from across the river. That's what it means. So you're telling me that you're something ethnically that is not identified a people as an ethnic group. So no, don't. What, all I'm saying is, brothers and sisters, is. Yeah, if you identify yourself with that, that's fine. But we take these idioms that have been placed on us and that is words from the European language without understanding what they mean, without doing a deep dive, and then we began to characterize ourselves by those words. We began to say that this is who I am. I am such and such, such and such, without any understanding of origin of who we are. And it makes it separate, it continues to further separate us. It doesn't bring us together. And the real 
thing is, is, is we should not care as it relates to those idioms. You understand what I mean? The idiom should come second to who you are as my brother and my sister. Yeah. Okay? And me loving you and wanting to help you in your condition mm -hmm. and wanting, you know, so, leaders coming together saying, what do we need to do for our people to that bring are suffering, people together. that are poor? Yes. What do we need to do for our brothers and sisters that even are middle class but are suffering from all type of mental issues? And, and, and I find even the worst are the ones that are so-called upper class, boule bougie, they have more problems than the average man that's in the ghetto or woman that's in the ghetto. But we facade and mask. You see what I'm saying? We, we use the, the, the whole aura of being something that you're not okay, to cover up the, the issues that we have. Okay. Uh, and, and then we, you know, it's the boule and the bougie and the, you know, we could go on and on, okay, that tend to always blame others instead of looking in the mirror and saying, no, I'm the problem. Okay. My brothers and sisters as in the ghetto, they're working hard to try to do all they can. If we talk about them committing crimes and all that, but what about you? What crime are you committing? You understand what I'm saying? What, what, are, what are we doing as a people to unite and stop separating ourselves by class, by politics, by religion, by race? You understand what I'm saying? Even black people separate themselves by race, light skin and dark skin. And it, it's, yes. it's foolishness. Is what I'm saying. And you cannot, if you are a spiritual person, you cannot continue in something that continues to divide you. I said it at the start, I'll say it again. We have got to move beyond division as a people and gravitate toward a holistic spiritual system that focuses on us collectively and not continue to individualize us. You understand? So we'll end there. Thank you Thank all you. for listening. I hope that you could find something that I said that was uh, that will benefit Thank you, you yeah. and that is advantageous to your spiritual growth. Uh, and like I said, we could deal with a lot of facets of, of this if you all want to. I did. I just kind of scratched the surface. Really didn't go deep, um, but just kind of wanted to give you some basics as it relates to some of those. This things. was okay. this was necessary. All right. <laughs> Thank All right. you, Brian. Thank you. Everybody, have a good night. Have, have a, a great good week. evening.